Hello and welcome to another video about Indian navigation with AR. I've recently asked in the community tab of my channel what should I talk about next and you have voted. There were not so many. Well, six votes. Hey, you know, it's not so bad. Uh, you have voted AR objects in multiple area targets and air target door. Those were most wanted, so I'm going to talk about those. And um, I'm going to show you this in a project that I'm currently working on with a college in Wales, the Gower College. There's a lots of good stuff on the... Actually, let me put myself small on this, so... This is gonna, you're gonna see more. I'm a totally OBS noob, so rookie. I'm OBS rookie, so forgive me. And uh, so in the documentation of, uh, I think it's here, you find a lot of information already about, uh, wow, their website is fast today. My WLAN is off. I just go directly to the side area targets in Unity. Okay, I want to talk about area targets because area targets are huge point clouds that can where you can place air content inside, which is pretty cool. So um, multiple area targets. This is really good. This works really good. The the, in my previous tutorial, I explained how I did it without this script of Euphoria because at that time when we did our application, it didn't exist yet. So, um, yeah, try it out and um, it works very well for me. What it basically does is it um, it always puts puts the puts the area targets relative to each other how you place them in the scene now and um yeah that makes sense how i solved it was that i had an active error target that is tracking and then all of the other error targets or the the augmented reality objects i placed as a child of them and then when you when another error target was detected i switched it around and all of the other error target objects AR e objects, they went to the uh, as children of the other, and when they are children of an air target, then they get positioned correctly. And so, um, yeah, I hope this makes sense. How I set it up, I have here the air targets, then I have this multi area script from Foforia, and then I have a structure just to to be able to support multiple multiple buildings and stuff like this. Um, so so to scale it up, I have a floor and then when on one floor I have uh, an augmented space and the, the augmented space is basically describing the, the area target. It's like, okay, a name, which building, which floor, what camera, oh, with w which for four year version when did I created it? And then the augmentation, the augmentation object. I think this is just for. Um, can quickly look at this. I think this is just for uh, for having a reference when when you want to de disable it. Um, yeah. So basically, in the in the air air ground floor. Yeah, you could rename it to AR objects, and it's obvious. So here I have all of the the AR stuff that I want to show relative to the to the AR target. And so, um, for example, here we have the nef mesh, and the nef mesh I built for the whole scene into this nef mesh because of the multi area script it's gonna it's gonna synchronize for for all of the area targets so that's that's just a bit simpler i thought than to split it up into the different parts because here we have the we have the ground floor we have the first floor the second floor the third floor so yeah 
And um, then we have the nav mesh additions. This is um, the, yeah, and then we have improvements. I think I explained this in, in the other video as well. I think that was more than a year ago. And so, yeah, here we, for example, we, um, because there's a broken mesh that happens often in, in scans. This is, uh, yeah. So then when you, when you bake the nav mesh, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna show that you can actually walk there. Um, yeah, then we have those improvements also for the stairs, for example, because often at stairs, the nav mesh doesn't work very well. So usually now I always create a, an object that, uh, that the nav mesh is working well. Of course you can play around with the nav mesh agent probably, but I found this to be the most consistent uh, way to work with. This is not work. Ah, yeah. So this is the augmented space, not really big magic. Um, what do I do with the, like we said before, what I do with the augmentation part. Ah, we deactivated in the beginning. Yeah, makes sense. And then we later deactivate it when it's when the air target is found. Okay, so um, this is the, the improvements. Then we have the the obstacles. The obstacles you probably seen. Yeah, I've shown in the other videos. This is when you. This is also useful to have the navigation tab down here. I found, in case you wonder. And so um, here. Yeah, basically what you want when when an arrow when a when the line I'm not gonna demonstrate it right now but when the line is moving and uh, when the line is showing like we do it, like we render the line still when it goes around the corner it it will go around here and that doesn't look so nice so I created this obstacles at some points so it looks uh, it will show the line more in the middle this is one approach and then the index the endings that's a quick quick and dirty to show okay here's not a supported area anymore for the area target or for the localization yeah with other menu additions and we have the points of interest manual occlusion this i created because um the occlusion that normally is activated with the area target doesn't um doesn't work anymore. I don't know. Run occlusion mesh. I have this on and it doesn't occlude. So I created a manual occlusion. I basically have this. Um, I imported the the same mesh that is using that is used by um, by the area target. Um, I don't know where to find it. I think it. I put an. Did I put an explanation on my on the channel? I think I did. Ah, I, I did here. Uh, yeah, here's an explanation in the how it works the the workaround procedure. If you have trouble, if you have trouble with the occlusion, and if you need more information about this, I can make a, a detailed video about this. Um, that basically I use an invisible mat material not calling du during the developing and then I think it's changing to to calling when yeah I don't find it right now but uh, let's check into this, this script occlusion helper oh it's it's setting the invisible mat yeah it's changing to the invisible material once it's it's running this one here. I'm also using this invisible material for for the for this here for this um, nav mesh additions. So I can see them in the in the editor, which makes sense. And then I uh, I add this on runtime. And so this is all of the yeah. So basically. Um, what was the main point that we have to get through? 
AR, in multiple AR, AR objects in multiple area targets. So um, there's not much um, to it. You just have to to organize it good. Like you can have your area targets. You don't have to make them building ground floor uh, floors and everything like this. If you have if you have a simpler setup, I just recommend it do it like this. If you have a whole building, but basically this is an area target. This is an area target. Um, this is an area target, and this one. And so, and then what you have as a child of this area target, this is the area object, and so. Oh, dang it. My son woke up. Yeah, it's it's afternoon and they are done with their um, nap. And so this is how this works with the... Yeah, you have here the AR, tar the AR objects as children. And then this multiple multi error script that helps with the, putting them together. Are you okay? Yeah, let's wrap this up here and I'm gonna... Oh, the daughter is up as well. Everyone is finished with their nap. So let's we'll look at the air target door in the next. Well, next time. Bye-bye.